Welcome back everyone to another segment of the MCR Mac and me. My name is TJ and in this segment. I just wanted to share some of the things I've heard. Said by politicians across the aisle that being the Democrats, Democrat politicians. Uh, one involves uh, our MIA president missing an action. I, I got to tell you, he's missing an action. OK, physically and mentally. But uh, our our MIA president and uh, and one of the finer uh, representatives out of the state of uh, I want to say Maryland, 8th District of Maryland. I say that sarcastically. This this is the kind of bovine excrement that kind of fires me up. Biden in an interview, they asked him if there was going to be any kind of a peaceful transition if President Trump were to win the presidential election. He, he says a couple sentences here, and, and, and I'll just give everyone a heads up. The second sentence involves him correcting himself from what he said in the first sentence. OK, so in his response, President Biden first says if if Trump wins, no, I'm not confident at all. And that was in response to do you think, uh, you know, there'll be a peaceful transition. So to that question. His response is, if Trump wins, no, I'm not confident at all. He's not confident there'll be a peaceful transition. But then he catches himself and thinks, uh-oh, I need to correct that. Of course, a little assumption on my part, theorizing. So he quick he uh, cr- quickly corrects it to, I mean, if Trump loses, I'm not confident at all. So, and, you know, that, that I heard that as well. And, you know, it makes no sense. Well, in other words, if uh, if if Trump wins, no, there isn't going to be a peaceful transition. Oh, oh, oh I mean, I mean, if Trump loses, it's be, his supporters won't allow for, you know, he, here's the thing. If Trump loses, there is no transition. Exactly. You know? I mean, it's just you, it's just they stay. We go, we, we go from the third Barack Obama administration to perhaps the fourth and fifth Barack Obama administrations. That, 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 that's the only transition that will happen. Yeah. So anyways, af- after hearing that, I thought back uh, some days prior and, and I and I believe this occurred on August the 5th. At least that's when it was reported. So whether or not he said it August the 5th or just prior to August 5th. But as I've already mentioned, Jamie Raskin, Democrat representative out of Maryland's 8th district, he's at a book signing and he's all all dude up with a bow tie and which which is so contrary to the way he used to portray himself. If you recall in Congress, he used to go in there with a bandana on his head. Yeah, okay? I remember that. So, so, you know, to see this guy who some years ago would sport a bandana, now he's wearing a suit with a bow tie. Okay. Well, he's, he's pontificating, we'll say. And he's someone's that, you know, someone asked him about, uh, if Trump wins and and the transition of power and his response was and I and I, I don't have the exact text here, but his response was, "We'll employ Section Three of the Fourteenth Amendment," and 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 he now, and here's the scary thing: if Democrats win the House, I think they're going to do that. If, if they certain they yeah, they certainly could, and. And I looked up Section 3 of the 14th Amendment because, you know, Lord God Almighty, heaven forbid we not be accurate here. But uh, per my research, it, the thir- Section 3 of the 14th Amendment involved uh, people, and this was at the conclusion of uh, the Civil War. And there were concerns that those from the South who had lost in the Civil War had not had a true change of heart and would somehow attempt to infiltrate the government and subvert it. So so Section 3 of the 14th Amendment was intended to prevent that from occurring. Okay. Yeah. And that that was because they were insurrectionists, actual insurrectionists. Exactly. Yeah. And and uh, so they're going to they're going to take they're going to, you know, if Trump were to win, and and here's the thing, 
I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure this scenario would play out. And what I mean by that is, if Trump loses, and and we may or may not keep the House, who knows? But but it is possible that Trump loses, we keep the House, or it is possible that that uh, the Democrats win, we we keep the House. But uh, you know, if Trump were to win, I don't. I'm not so convinced the Democrats would take the House. But that seems they, un, in fact, I would tell you it seems unlikely to me. Yeah, it seems unlikely. Well, you know what? But but if it does happen, you know, he's tipped their hand. That's what they're going to well, try. Well, it, it begs the question: Who's really the threat to democracy? Yeah, that uh, they like to talk about so much. So much. And and as far as uh, who will and won't do this stuff, you know, I suppose it is possible that Trump wins the election. Republicans keep the House. And the Democrats throw it out there anyways to see, uh, you know, if, if anything sticks, you know. Well, the accusation against Trump and why he's so insane and mentally ill, as Joy Behar would have you believe, is that if he gets in office, he's not going to leave. Well, first off, he already he already left once and, and he did so peacefully. No problem. Uh you know, they, they you had the FBI and Nancy Pelosi stage a fake insurrection so they could go right to where we're at, where they want to go now. Um, these are the people who aren't going to leave office, they think. Uh, I think there are about 100 million of us uh, who might have other ideas about that. Oh, and Jamie Raskin also threw out there that, oh, we're probably going to all need bodyguards too once that happens. And, you know. Oh, you, you know, know what? what? Here, here's something Maybe he and I did. can agree on. You're definitely, you're going to need more than a bodyguard, pal. A whole lot more than a bodyguard. But uh, uh, slightly off topic, but uh, uh, Justice Gorsuch uh, has made some comments given the threats made to the Supreme Court, you know, by Schumer and others. And Gorsuch, I got the opinion, Gorsuch wasn't very happy. And I'll paraphrase, at the, at the risk of inaccuracy, I'll paraphrase, Gorsuch's response was, not so fast. You, you might want to back off of uh, some of these threats you're, you're issuing towards the Supreme Court, you know, like right. stacking it, uh, impeachment, term limits okay you know all this stuff's being thrown out and, and gorsuch was like mm, you guys might want to back off on that you know well uh, I, I, I listened to uh, alan dershowitz on uh, professor dershowitz from harvard and he's he's a he's a he's a lefty and he says not happening in no way in no way is this constitutional well here's it's a thing. democrat wet dream in other words yeah they think they're somehow going to just do it and I found it very interesting that Gorsuch would come out and say, mm, "Tame it down," you know. Yeah. I, I, and again, I'm paraphrasing. I, I, well, I, I think just, I think even the leftist on the courts, other than perhaps uh, Congente Brown, who doesn't belong on that court because she's a moron and a dishonest moron. She doesn't know moron. what a woman is. She yeah. Doesn't know what a woman is. Well, she's a liar, uh, and and she's a complete, completely dishonest person. Uh, she knows exactly what a woman is. Uh, she should have been disqualified for that comment alone. But the, the, even they, they like their little exclusive club. Oh, and I, I don't think they yeah. want to add 150 people to it because then they would be, it would be, so what if you're a Supreme Court? You're just one of 150. Yep. You know, I and I, on the heels of this whole topic and people talking their nonsense, uh, I'm, and we and we mentioned this back for the 2020 election, and these people have not gone away, okay? And what I'm talking about is the Transition Integrity Project. Uh, these people haven't gone away. These are the people, they're, they're Democrats and rhino, never Trump Republicans. Uh, back in 2020, they gamed out different scenarios of what would happen if Trump won. John Podesta, uh, a uh, high-level Democrat operative actually gamed out a scenario because they did like four different scenarios. And, and and one of the scenarios Podesta gamed out was the fact that if Trump wins, California, Oregon, and Washington was going to secede 
and attempt to correct the situation. No, no, know? they aren't. They aren't. They, they, yeah, they can talk all that shit just like Texas talks it. Nobody's succeed, succeeding. No, uh, no one is. Some of the, some of the names I recognized involving this group: Michael Steele, Bill Crystal, John Podesta, Donna Brazil, and you know Donna Brazil. She 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 deserves a whole lot of credit. She don't. It's not entirely uh, her doing, but they're insurrectionists. Was, uh, Donna Brazil was uh, she she did her fair share of corrupting and polluting Fox News. Yeah. And if and if you recall, after the 2020 election, she basically quit Fox News and said, "I accomplished what my goal was." You know. Right. So you can only. You can only assume what her goal was, given her her position at Fox News. Uh, I'm also compelled to mention a, I don't I don't know if this was a memo or what, but uh, a week or so ago, uh, this uh, I'm going to call it a memo because I I don't know exactly what technically what it's called. It uh, began to circulate, and it was Republicans for Harris, uh, Kamala Harris, launches with endorsements from across the country. And then it says campaign within a campaign to mobilize and reach Republican Harris voters. Basically, uh, today, it reads, today Harris for president is launching Republicans for Harris, a grassroots organizing program to further outreach efforts to the millions of Republican voters who continue to reject the chaos, division, and violence of Donald Trump and his Project 2025. This program will leverage principal travel on the ground, organizing efforts, and paid media to reach, persuade, and mobilize Republican voters. So basically, the, they're the Project trying to get 2025 is another, it's, a, it's the Russian dossier. It's the modern version of the Russian, Russian dossier. Well, there's a list of rhino Republicans that have signed on to this, I will t I will confess uh, three quarters of the names I didn't recognize, but uh, the ones I did recognize recognize Chuck Hagel, uh, Christine Todd Whitman. Uh, let's see, uh, a guy by the name of Joe Walsh, and not the singer Joe Walsh either. <laughs> and I was I was kind of I mean I know he. I know he hated Trump, but I thought Joe Walsh hated Trump because he wasn't conservative enough. But now, what would I know about Joe Walsh? Uh, let's see. Uh, I know he's stupid. Names. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 if he believes any Republican could vote for Kamala Harris. If any Republican votes for Kamala Harris, they're not a Republican. They're, a, they're they are the literal definition of, of a rhino Republican in name only. And, and and here's the thing, they're voting for what we can now call a ticket of extreme liberalism. Yeah. Uh, in the previous segment, we we mentioned uh, about uh, their transgender uh, position and 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 all this warped uh, stuff they're trying to implement. Uh, you know, and uh, and these so-called Republicans are are going to. Uh, support and advance that platform I, you know man, right I, they're not republicans in any way no they're not they just, they need to get out and i don't know be you know what they might they need to get out and say yeah we're democrats now that wouldn't hurt my feelings none you Couldn't know? care less so uh that's all i got on this topic okay. uh uh i just i just i just hope uh, president trump wins this uh this uh november Yes. And then I, you know what? And then I hope, uh, I don't know, man. I just, they're, 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 they're not going to, they're not going to let a peaceful transition occur. So what happens after they, that they, is anyone. They does. did what they did in 2020 to gain power and they're not giving it back is what they're telling us. They're telling us already. They're not giving it back. Yeah. Uh, the swing states are so critical, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Those yeah. three states most likely will determine the election. Uh, 
you know, the battle lines are drawn. What what more can be said here, you know? Right, right. So that that's that's all we got for this one. And uh, we'll catch you all in the next segment. As always, be safe, watch your six, and don't tread on me.